Is the Mercedes-Benz E450 all-terrain the best family vehicle money can buy? Well, it is a lot of money, but it is very good. Let's check it out. Americans love Rebels and Mavericks, and no, I don't mean the vehicles. We're fiercely independent, except when it comes to hauling the family. We tend to follow the pack and buy SUVs. There's no need for something this big to schlep the brood around. Mercedes offers this alternative, the E450 All-Terrain. It has all the useful attributes of a sport ute in a sleek Euro package. Okay, it's a station wagon. Want to stand out at a tailgate party? Wagons make quite the fashion statement against the usual crossovers and vans. What used to be pure Americana is now only offered by Japanese and European automakers like Audi, Subaru, Volvo, and oddly enough, Porsche. Typically, they now tend to be trimmed with rugged cladding like the all-terrain here because you can't be too much of a dissident. For some reason, those in my profession love station wagons. Guilty, I've owned five of them. But as an automotive writer, I'm not trying to change anybody's mind. My job is to simply expose people so they can look at their lifestyles and situations and choose the vehicle that's right for them. That said, wagons have some real advantages over SUV crossovers. An example, the floor is lower, so entry and exit is super simple for little kids and older people. Accessibility is great. It was one reason why I liked them. It was very easy for my kids to get in and out. Plus, this is very roomy back here. Plenty of head, knee, leg, and foot room. Not an issue. As long as I'm here, let's not wait for evil twin. Things can be stashed away. Get the optional sunshades. Aftermarket units are so gauche. The third climate zone, also optional. The power sources are standard. I could charge anything back here. Frostbite Falls residents might want the heated seats at 580 bucks. I don't think a heating pad can run off that outlet. The center spine isn't all that large, so foot room for three is good. And yes, there's enough real estate for grown-ups all the way across. This is as spacious as a crossover. Let's talk about what makes the all-terrain go. It's a three liter turbocharged inline six cylinder with EQ boost technology. In other words, it's a 48 volt mild hybrid that makes 362 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque, and very little sound on startup because uh, you know, hybrids and all. The exhaust note is not for attracting attention. Flawless shifts are courtesy of a nine-speed automatic. I spent my week confusing this for the wipers. Owners will get used to that, I suppose. Formatic all-wheel drive is standard, as is a height-adjustable air suspension that's self-leveling and adaptive. There are also drive modes that can be tailored to suit your mood and situation. Let's say sport when heading off to pick up the kids, comfort when they're in the car. When you think of station wagons, performance is not usually the first thing that comes to mind. Same with hybrids. This has got some punch. Zero to 60, easily under five seconds. And here's the thing, lots of low end torque off the line. It's smooth and powerful. I like this. This car is equipped with the $1,100 Acoustic Comfort Package with laminated glass that absorbs heat and sound. So sonically and visually, this is a sanctuary. You don't even need to go to the woods. There's enough of it in the cabin. I've heard the 20-inch wheels add harshness. Stick with the 19s I have and the ride quality borders on Regal. Mercedes doesn't make an S-Class wagon. Silky smooth, buttery smooth, smooth as a baby's bottom. All of these cliches apply. The ride quality of this Benz is exactly what you would expect. Lots of polish, it's very comfortable. For the highway, there's a package that bundles a very good adaptive cruise control, lane keeping, automatic lane change, and much more. It does run an extra two grand. Like nearly all luxury automakers, Mercedes offers things a la carte. Another advantage that station wagons have is that they handle more like cars because, well, they are cars. They have a lower center of gravity than SUVs. They don't have that jacked up ride height that people like though, so you're gonna have to choose between the two. 
Wagons don't do the extra altitude thing as well as SUVs. Uh, just keep in mind that loading bikes and kayaks on the roof is easier with wagons, no need for a step stool or ladder, and the sleeker profile adds to efficiency. The EPA rates the fuel economy average of this at 24 miles per gallon, which is not bad considering this is a larger vehicle and all-wheel drive. It does require premium fuel though, that'll cost you. Shouldn't be much of an issue for Mercedes owners. Nearly all vehicles these days have fuel-saving automatic engine stop-start systems. This being a mild hybrid, shutdown is incredibly smooth. Lift my foot off the pedal, you can barely feel it turning on. You can turn it off, I doubt you'll ever want to. Because it's a hybrid, coasting and braking sends juice back to the battery, so the all-terrain can glide along with the inline six switched off. I average 26 miles per gallon. Try that in a Tahoe. This particular vehicle is equipped with an augmented reality navigation system. It's very, very cool. Enter a destination, and these graphics pop up well before the turns that you need to take. It makes sure that you don't ever miss any prompts. This, folks, is the future of navigation systems. Take Mercedes at its word and point the E450 to all-terrain, and yeah, it can do that. 4Matic is sophisticated, sending torque to the wheels that need it most. This alley is pretty much like the Forest Service roads that owners might tackle, but ground clearance under full load is only 5.7 inches. Even so, I won't need to call the city for maintenance. The all-terrain takes it just fine. No scraping the undercarriage. Another wagon advantage, the floor is on the low side, so loading stuff in and out is a lot easier than most SUVs and crossovers. And you might be thinking, hey, Tom, I occasionally need a third row. Well, submitted for your approval. Usually the way back on any triple row vehicle is best for kids. You're certainly not getting adults back here, plain and simple, but the little ones do love this spot. Using it means removing the substantial privacy shade and stashing that in the garage. There are the usual helpful things that are found in a Mercedes boot. Dropping row two to make a perfectly flat load floor is a cinch. Maximum cargo room is a generous 64 cubic feet. And as you know, I'm a big fan of 40-20-40 split seats, so the all-terrain scratches that itch for me. Those are just releases, the backs are not powered. I did not spot a spare, just a repair kit. I'll figure owners will nearly always use row two. 35 cubic feet is a good amount of space for families to throw stuff like strollers and camping gear into. You probably won't be buying this much TP. If you did, know that 10 packs are good to go. A very good score. Think it won't close? I have great memories of my kids sitting in the back playing a game called Sweet and Sour. Uh, they would wave at the person behind them, and if they waved back, they were sweet. If not, sour. And see, it's part of the test. It has to close. This could be the sole reason that buyers decide on the E450. Just sitting down in the cockpit and looking around reduces stress. There's no doubt that this is from real trees, and the optional seats have every trick in the book. Heat, venting, massage, and side bolsters that move while cornering to hold passengers tight. Kind of fun to watch newcomers that aren't expecting that. Mercedes does ambient lighting very well. You'll want to drive at night just to see it. If you didn't notice, the standard dual 12.3 inch screens that look like one are bright and crisp. The gauge cluster can be configured in a number of different ways, which is cool, uh, but it's only a matter of time before people will crave physical gauges. That's just human nature. The MBUX user interface is now one of the better ones. It can be touchscreen with excellent response or use it with this setup. There's also the option of gesture controls. Screens can be distracting. Fortunately, MBUX has a natural voice command prompt system that works really well. You can simply ask for directions to turn up the cabin heat, anything by just using the prompt. Hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? What's the square root of 1,722? 41.496988. Obviously programmed by German engineers. 
The screens can also be navigated by these small steering wheel controls that are cumbersome, but voice commands are terrific, so use those. The optional air balance purification system scrubs incoming molecules better and adds fragrance. <laughs> Free side mood? Seems more California than Deutsch. The premium package adds a very good Burmester surround system, bird's eye view, and automated parking, but a heated wheel, the definition of premium, would be another 250 bucks. The doors are soft close. At 550, if you'd rather spend that on the toasty wheel, I will note that parked on even slight grades. The doors don't hold open. Ask my shin about that. As for design, I think of wagons as svelte SUVs, and the E-Class is a looker. Lots of people in my neighborhood love the style, but then again, half the Subaru sold in America seem to be within two blocks of my house. While the all-terrain does get extra cladding that the normal version doesn't get, if it were sold here, it's not. It's tastefully done, nothing overwrought, like a Forest Service Ranger and a Calvin Klein Blazer and Cole Hans. Pricing? Well, it starts at $69,400 with shipping. I mentioned a few of the options, and with the $750 graphite gray paint, plus the nut brown and black Napa leather package at nearly three grand, the price as tested rises to nearly $88,000. Not unexpected for this brand, but I'll point out that buys two fully optioned Outbacks and very nice mountain bikes as well. Let's wrap this up with red light, green light. Green light, good to see Mercedes bringing this handsome wagon to our shores. They work as well as SUVs, maybe better. They're easier to load. The powerful driving dynamic is crisp, controlled, and uh, silky, another smooth cliche there. The lovely cabin will lower your blood pressure, maybe get your doctor to prescribe one, <laughs> see if your healthcare pays for it. Yellow lights, the excellent cornering ability is due to the lower ride height if you crave the higher seating position of an SUV. The semi-autonomous driving tech offers a confident experience, but it's not standard. I'm happy that Mercedes still offers a wagon, but it's in all-terrain trim or nothing. Red light, 88 grand is tested and not fully loaded, is quite a price barrier for most buyers. For real all-terrain bragging rights, extra ground clearance would be helpful and no spare tire. If you're gonna go off-road at all, gotta have one of those. Yeah, Mercedes doesn't offer this as a plane wagon, but I'll assume the product planners are simply giving the people what they want. Automakers are in the business to make money. And that said, I'm surprised the US is getting a wagon at all. They're very overlooked. So if you have to haul a lot of people, you can buy an SUV or a minivan. Those are awesome. Or a station wagon. You just have to test drive a lot of different vehicles and buy the vehicle that's right for you. 30 years ago, no one would believe that the station wagon would become something of a radical choice. But here we are. It's a crazy world. The Mercedes E450 all-terrain offers buyers that need flexibility, some individuality, and refuge from the madness. I had the all-terrain over the Thanksgiving holiday, and it hustled a lot of folk to and from the airport. One thing I noticed was that sensors detect cars approaching from behind and warn you not to open the door all the way, or you'll be looking for a body shop, if not a medic. And to prove this is as useful as any SUV crossover, I used it to take a load of stuff to Goodwill, including a wicker shelving unit, the most elaborate hamster cage system on the West Coast, a chair found on the side of the road that I never fixed, and two security shades from Volvo station wagons that were totaled. Easy to load up, easy to pull things out of. Wagons. Gotta love them. Hope you got something out of my look at the Mercedes-Benz E450 all-terrain. Not afraid to be called a station wagon, which brings me to this episode's fun fact that I try to give you at the end of every review. Where does the term station wagon come from? Well, back in the day when we traveled long distances by train, not by plane, we were met by the hotel we were staying at at the train station. That vehicle was specially modified, so it took on as much luggage as possible. It was the station wagon. That is where it comes from. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, and I'm assuming that you did because you're still here at the end, subscribe to this channel, okay? Thanks for watching.
That's Driven. I'm Tom Volpe.